There really are two types of truss building or two types of roof support when it comes to tiny house construction. The first, of course, is a standard truss assembly, which means that you're creating a sort of triangular shape out of two-befores that supports the weight and the integrity of your roof. The second is to run a ridge board from front to back of your tiny house and then connect your uh, ceiling joists to that ridge board. Also a fine idea. In this particular case, though, we decided to build trusses at home. Now, the type of truss that we chose to build was... I suppose I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, though. So let's just backtrack a little bit, and let's talk about a few things first. Now, best I know, in architectural and structural engineering, as well as tiny house building, a truss is a structure comprising one or more triangular units constructed with straight members whose ends are connected at joints. So we chose to build a queen post truss, which is sometimes called queen post one word or queen's post, also one word. And now it's similar to a king post truss in that the outer supports are angled towards the center of the structure. The primary difference is that the horizontal extension at the center, which relies on a beam action to provide mechanical stability. Now, this truss style is only suitable for relatively short spans, and in the case of a tiny house, where you're talking about an 8-foot straight width, and then generally about a 10 or 11-foot angled width, it's kind of ideal. At least I thought so. So to build our trusses, we started out with just standard 2 befores. Uh, we went ahead and we measured what you would typically call the uh, what you would typically call the rafter member or the top cord, as well as the joist member or the bottom cord. I then went about notching out where the rafter member or the top cord would sit down on top of the perimeter framing. Pretty easy. I just used uh, a circular saw, and then once I had gotten the majority of the notch out, then I switched over to a little bit of a jigsaw so that I could finish those up. Now, once we had moved on from cutting out those notches, or bird's eyes, if you will, then we decided to connect the rafter members, which are, of course, on an angle. Now, the way we did that was we just cut our angle with our uh, miter saw, held the two pieces together, took the nail gun, and shot a nail through the place where the uh, top cords connect. At this point, you have to reinforce that connection of those top cords. So you can either use a pre-manufactured plate, which is typically metal, steel, something of that nature, or you can make your own. For us, we decided to use some OSB plywood and construct our own. Now, essentially what that means is mimicking the angles of those top cords, cutting it out with a circular saw, and creating the plate. You then take the plate, attach it to the two top cords that you just put together, Pick up your nail gun, shoot the top plate in. Now, we knew that that top plate was not going to be as sturdy as we wanted it to be, so what we ended up doing was taking a 2 before and cutting a triangle out that would simply fit up underneath of our plate, our OSB plate. You can see that uh, triangle right there. We just slide it in, and then we take the hammer, just knock it in there so it's nice and tight. Once we've got it flush with everything, hold it tight, Take the nail gun, pop, 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 and it's in there. Now my description of how to build a truss may sound a bit simplistic, it may sound elementary, but it really is not a hard thing to do. If your math is right, if your angles are correct, and you understand the actual span or the actual width of your structure, then you too can build a truss at home. You need to remember a couple of things. I always recommend using hurricane straps, just like the illustration you see here, even if you've got that notch, that bird's eye notch, to go over your perimeter framing. Once you've done that, though, are you, you're sure about things, you've got everything nailed in tight, you get a nice quality finished look. You can even include an exposed beam like we've done for our tiny house. Thanks again for joining us on Tiny Revolution. And as always, if you have any questions about today's how-to, feel free to email us at andodom at gmail.com or visit us at tinyrevolution.us.